Welcome to the polyphenylene oxide lecture for thermoplastic resins. This is the last of our sulfur and oxygen containing thermoplastics. Polyphenylene oxide is shown here in this red box. So it has an uh, aromatic backbone with two methyl groups and an oxygen in the backbone. This falls under the category of an engineering thermoplastic and it was first invented by Union Carbide in 1964 and GE or Sabic worked on this in 1965. It is characterized by extraordinary dimensional stability, creep strength at elevated temperatures, extremely low moisture absorptivity, and it makes it ideal for autoclave type applications. This is how you make PPO. Uh, you have your monomer shown here in the presence of ox oxygen and a copper and amine catalyst to make uh, polyphenylene oxide and water is a byproduct. This is oxidative coupling and this is an oxidative polycondensation reaction. Uh, growing polymer molecules couple with either monomers or other polymer molecules, so it's kind of that in-between in terms of uh, polymerization reaction. I'm not going to require you to rem uh, re remember this for an exam, but here is the polymerization mechanism. You have monomer addition, uh, so you have dimer formation, it's kind of like condensation, but you also have a chain-like mechanism as well. And you have these quinone ketal intermediates that form by the coupling of a polymeric aryl oxy radical. Uh, and so this has this kind of weird um, hybrid type mechanism. So there's also this step like mechanism, and the components of the step like mechanism can occur by the reaction of two larger species. So this is where you have big uh, either monomer reacting with polymer or things like that. Uh, you have varied degrees of polymerization in equilibrium. Ketals are converted to polymeric phenols by either intramolecular rearrangement or disproportionation uh, to aryl oxy radicals. And really the reaction condition determine the quality of the final resin product. Uh, and the oxygen that's present uh, really kind of determines that uh, final resin. In other words, stoichiometric consumption of oxygen. PPO has a very low specific gravity. And this is the lightest of the engineering thermoplastics, which gives it very favorable specific properties. The mechanical properties overall are lower, but the low density gives it better specific properties. When you're looking at PPO, the tensile strength seems low, but again, you have to take the, gra the uh, specific gravity into account. It has high toughness, and this is attributed to the PPO's rigid structure. Uh, it has a low temperature transition at negative 116 Celsius, which enham enhances room temperature toughness. It has excellent dimensional stability, and its metal shrinkage is very low. Nice thing about this is a very wide surface temperature range, so negative 170 to 190 Celsius. And that means it can perform in many different climate zones and seasons, so anywhere from Arctic to tropical. It has excellent hydrolytic stability. Uh, its moisture absorptivity is very low over a 24-hour period. It has good electrical insulating properties, and it's good for high-voltage insulators. It's one of the only ones that is good for high-voltage insulation. It is considered uh, self-extinguishing, but it's just above that FAA limit. So its limiting oxygen index is 30, and the minimum for FAA purposes is 28. Um, it's only marginally better than that minimum FAA number. This is a very low volume consumption. It's because it's very expensive. Norreal is a blend of uh, uh, polystyrene and PPO, which makes it more cost effective. PPO is also susceptible to chemical attack, to strong oxidizing acids, chlorinated solvents, or aromatic or ketone solvents. This is not easy to process. Processing temperatures are above 310, and organic colorants cannot handle these, these surface temperatures. So the only color that PPO comes in is black. It also has poor arc resistance. As you can see, all of these applications have black PPO. Uh, because you cannot put an organic colorant in here which can withstand the processing temperatures that PPO has to be processed at. This is preferred for materials in water resistant applications in place of stainless steel. So things like water pumps and meters, hot water tanks, washing machine parts, and pipes and fittings. It's also used for impact resistant applications for TV cabinets, computer and calculator housings, or automotive dashboards, and automotive grills. It's also used in electronic applications like electrical connectors and terminal blocks. Like I said, really, really short for PPO. Now we're going to move on. We have finished the sulfur and oxygen containing polymers, and from here we're going to move on to Teflon.